Hello and welcome to the St. Francis Fast Break. I'm Dan Griffin. We're on to week two in Northeast Conference play, and that means the teams are off to the Big Apple to take on the Brooklyn schools. We'll have a look on how the men's team fared against LIU Brooklyn on Thursday night and watch how the women took down Mount St. Mary's here at home in a wild game back on Monday. Allen kicks out Kovach from the corner. 400. Sabino on a shot fake behind the back. She goes up nice and shot. in. Five seconds now for Wallace on a drive. Kick out Solvin. Three on the way from the corner. Short on the shot. Ball tipped around. The red flash will escape. Not the prettiest of victories, but you know our, our outcome goal this weekend was to come out 2-0. Jump stop for Jamal, and he loses it. Here comes Jenkins. He doesn't have numbers. He's going to go anyway, and he scores. What a move. We promise the, you know, the guys, the staff will be prepared. We'll make sure that these guys are ready to play, and we'll get back at it. And we'll continue to grow. We'll continue to get better. Our challenge is to be playing our best basketball in a couple weeks. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this game comes down to the last couple of minutes as well. That was a robbery from King. He'll take it all the way. Bark back in there with two fouls. He stays on Braxton, gives him room, and Braxton makes him pay. Everything going down for St. Francis. They are I'm joined here by head men's basketball coach Rob Krimmel. Rob, we'll start by recapping last week, uh, opening week of conference play, and we opened with a win on Thursday against Mount St. Mary's and get a little bit of a monkey off our back by snapping a seven-game losing streak to the Mountaineers. Anytime you can go 1-0 and, and get that first win, and that's been our mantra here the, you know, since the, the calendar turned to 2019, is to go 1-0. You know, I think the team with the expectations and maybe some of the pressures of being the top, you know, the, the number one pick, uh, we wanted our guys just to focus on Mount St. Mary's. You know, and, and, and I thought that they were able to do that and a different Mount team from the past with a new coach and a lot of new faces. But Dan's got those kids playing hard. And I was pleased with the way our guys uh, started the game. And uh, Mount made a little bit of a run there in the second half. We weren't able to extend the lead. But uh, halfway through the second half, we made the plays that we needed to make. And uh, you know, I thought it was our best 40-minute performance of the year in terms of offense and defense. And the staff did a good job getting our guys prepared to play. So you know, using that game as a springboard into Saturday and uh, you know, certainly to go 1-0 and was a good start for us. And certainly big performances from your veteran players. Jamal King with 25 points. Keith Braxton, we've seen it so many times, 17 points, 17 rebounds. Uh, just talk about your leader stepping up. It, it's important. You know, this time of the year, that's what you need from those guys. And, uh, you know, Keith and Jamal are, are two kids that have put a lot of time into their game and have spent a lot of time not just, you know, making sure that they're ready to play, but making sure other guys are ready to play. And they've really embraced the challenges that we've thrown at them as a staff. And it, it's neat to see them grow as basketball players. And the stats will, will reveal that. But a lot of that stuff goes unnoticed. Both of them are communicating better. Both of them are more engaged in terms of the preparation of what we need to do to get ready. And I'm excited to see how they continue to grow throughout the, uh, the, rest, of the, non or the rest of the conference slate. A little bit different story uh, against Fairleigh Dinkins on Saturday night. Just seemed like one of those nights where everything we threw at them, they had an answer. And, and give FDU credit. You know, they, they played better than we did. And that's what I told the team after the game. Some nights, the other team is just better. I was pleased with the way we started. I think the game, the first 15 minutes went as scripted. You know, I think the, the, the two teams went back and forth. And they made a, a run there at the end of the first half. Uh, and then coming out to start the second half that, you know, we really couldn't Claw, claw our way back in. And when you look at the final score, you know, the, the defensive numbers would, would indicate that we need a little bit of work and we still need to get better at that. Where we really struggled was on the offensive end and, uh, you know, making shots and turning the ball over too much, you know, which is something that last year we didn't do a whole heck of a lot. And, and it's something we challenged our guys here after that game to, to value the ball a little bit more. Because against a talented team like FDU, you can't give them free possessions running downhill. And that's how you generate momentum, both individually and as a team. So our challenge going into this week here is make sure that we take care of the basketball, continue to grow defensively. I think we're getting better in those areas, but offensively make sure that we uh, get the shots that we want every, every single time down the floor. And certainly a chance to respond this week with the upcoming New York trip. Uh, we have LAU Brooklyn Thursday night, St. Francis Brooklyn Saturday night. New York, Mecca of college basketball, what makes that trip so unique? It, it certainly is a, a unique experience for a couple of reasons. Number one, the schools are so close together. It's, it's probably uh, Coach McConnell's easiest but most difficult travel uh, prep because you're going to the city, but the two schools are so close together. And, um, you know, two teams that are playing really well right now, both in the non-conference and now here early in the conference play. But, you know, being able to play basketball in New York City is, you know, 
LIU and St. Francis, New York. And then we have a couple other schools that are within a stone's, stone's throw of those two schools. And it, it makes it uh, neat for our guys to be able to travel there and to play there. But uh, I know we're going focused on Thursday and trying to go 1-0 again. So let's preview the matchup. Certainly two tough opponents, LIU Brooklyn, the defending NEC champions, and then St. Francis Brooklyn off to a 9-6 and six start. Uh, right now the best winning percentage in the conference. So what, what's the challenge going to be like for the guys? You know, again, the challenges that, that we issued after our last game. You know, I think going on the road, you have to take care of the basketball. You can't give a team at home free runs at the basket. They're comfortable in that environment. And we've got to do a good job of continuing to take teams out of what they do well and focusing on the scouting report. And, and the margin for error in this league is is so small. And I think you see that, you know, with the opening weekend, the parity of, you know, how many teams are one and one. And I mean, we're only two games in, but, you know, no one really kind of established themselves in the first weekend. So we've got to take care of the basketball and make sure that we get the shot that we want to get so we can set up our defense and if we can do that you know in both games it'll give us a chance to go one and on thursday and then we'll worry about going one and on saturday thanks rob fans packed a gall arena last season especially when cbs sports and espn came to town two red flash super fans had one mission in those games get themselves on national tv they've been stealing the spotlight ever since been to a game at DeGaulle Arena, chances are you've seen the Red Flash superfans. Jacob and Caitlin Zernick and their yellow signs. Keith and Jamal are my favorite, my personal favorite, so that's why I picked this sign. All right, and you've got, all right, you're a big Jess Kovach fan, I take it. What do you, what, what part of her, her game do you like the most? All the threes? The threes. As Kovac comes off two screens, a step back three, and that is automatic. They get their love of St. Francis from their father, Jody. He's been coming to games since he was their age. My elementary uh, basketball instructor used to bring me, and uh, we used to sit at half court, and um, he, used to, he was good friends with, uh, back then was Jim Barron, head coach Barron, and he was good friends with Jim Barron, and he, uh, he let me go into the locker room with the players and even the visiting team, too. From KB and J to getting swaggy with it, Jacob and Caitlin love to show off their catchphrases, and the student athletes enjoy it too. It's great. I mean, um, yeah, I gave her um, my pink jersey. It's you know having little kids like that look up to you so much. You you want to give back, and they're there. They're making new signs every day. There's different sayings on it. It's it's amazing that. They have all their, you look over and there's like four signs of like for Court, Carson, me, uh, Haley, like it's, it's really nice to have and there, you know, there's a good play happens, you look up, they're standing up, cheering just as hard as our benches, like it's great to have that kind of support. I became friends with uh, Coach Krimmel, you know, just being around here, Coach Krimmel's a great guy and uh, he and I became friends and he invites us to his practice a lot and we come over and watch, watch the team and it's just, it's, uh, it's just like St. Francis, it's family to us. They don't just love basketball. You can find the Xernix behind the home run fence at Red Flash softball games and many other sports. Now be honest, if you had to guess, how long does it take to prep all this up? Because you guys have got new material pretty much every home game. Uh -huh. Probably half hour. That's, that's it? You guys, where do you guys come up with the, the ideas then? Like, are, you, are, you, are you just talking at the dinner table one day? Hey, I want to I wanna really support uh, Jamal and Keith today. I really want to I, I really root Jess on because you guys have pretty much got the entire team covered from the, the starters to the end of the bench. Yeah, you got you to gotta earn a sign. <laughs> the basketball team is also supporting Jacob Zernick and his nonprofit organization, Seeds for Needs. You see, Jacob was diagnosed with Crohn's disease at the age of eight years old. He started this foundation to help give back to children and children's hospitals in need. Still to come on the St. Francis Fast Break. They were once rivals in the high school hardwood. Now Haley Thomas and Carson Swagger have teamed up and are on a quest to win another NEC championship. But first, time for some Red Flash trivia. Jess Inova left her mark at St. Francis as the school and conference's all-time leading scorer. What number jersey did she wear for the Red Flash? The answer when we come back. When a student comes to St. Francis University, they come with gifts and talents that are unique to them. It's our role to help those students become the person that they are meant to be. 
Here's the answer to this week's trivia question. Northeast Conference and Red Flash Hall of Famer Jess Noble wore the number 22. That number will be retired on February 9th before the game against Central Connecticut, marking the first time in SFU history a women's jersey will hang from the rafters. Dan Griffin back here with you on the St. Francis Fast Break. Joined here with the head women's basketball coach, Susan robinson Fructo, coming off a big 2-0 opening weekend to start conference play. And it, it always sounds really good when you can start 2-0 in conference play. Yeah, you know, Dan, that was the outcome goal. Um, we had a lot of process goals in, in, in the process. But, yeah, it was definitely a huge um, accomplishment coming out 2-0 the first weekend. Every team wants to do that. It was good to be home, play in front of our fans again. And, um, you know, we saw a lot of good things, um, f you know, fairly close games. Obviously, the Mount St. Mary's game was really tight, and I think we learned a lot from both games. So it'll be uh, great to get back into practice and to work on those things. Well, you guys won in a, a, a two completely different ways against FDU and Mount St. Mary's, but one consistent was that defense. Uh, Two three kind of a matchup zone, and you guys were all over the place. Uh, Sam Sabino four steals. Leah Morrow was all over the place. Courtney obviously patrolling that is that rim protector getting the blocks. It's uh, you really stymied a pair of two pretty good offenses. Yeah, we did. Um, you know, holding both teams to lower shooting percentages from the three, which typically zones are designed to keep the ball out of the paint, and you're going to give up some threes. But um, I think with Courtney with Anisha Williams in the middle a lot, uh, we can extend out more. And that's kind of what the des the zone's designed to do. Because you're right, it's more of a matchup zone. It's We do not want it to be a typical just sit there 2-3 zone. Um, we need to put pressure on the ball, which Sam really does. And she and Carson specifically do a great job at the top of the zone. They put forth a lot of energy. Um, our back is bigger. You know, with Aaliyah, with a Jess Kovacs, with a Haley Thomas, we can put more size and length back there to help us rebound and to help us co get out on shooters. Well, let's talk a little bit about the, the offensive side of the ball. Obviously, uh, Jess Kovacs going to steal the headlines, averaging 26, 27 points per game. But that's that's commonplace, really, at this point. We've been uh, very spoiled to see her play. But a lot of the complimentary pieces, I thought uh, Sam and Leah, especially against Mount St. Mary's, really were some unsung heroes and got some timely buckets. They really did. Um you know, I think both of those two students, the progression of Leah and Sam has been nice to watch. Um, they're working really hard, and they're very attentive um, to teaching, which is great. They've had a teachable spirit, which I love. And um, you've seen them just get better and better from week to week. So I'm looking forward to see how good they can get by the end of the season, to be quite honest. Well, you guys get the your first road test here this upcoming weekend. It's the the Brooklyn trip, which was always it's always one of my favorites because you typically stay in the same hotel, and by the end of the four days, you feel like you live in New York City. But two completely different teams in LIU Brooklyn and uh, St. Francis Brooklyn with the quick turnaround. That's got to make it a little challenging uh, on a coach to just see two completely polar opposite type of teams. Yeah, it is. It makes it tough, you know, a little difficult on scouting. We try to to pull out every on a two game weekend, we try to pull out um, any similarities. Um, not sure if there's gonna be a ton of similarities, you know, for these two games. But yeah, you're right. We love going to Brooklyn. It's a great trip. And um, especially when you don't have classes and they, they don't have a lot of studying to do. So we're gonna get in the city between games and uh, let you know have them experience maybe 9-11 Memorial and some other sites. But uh, our first, first Order of agenda, though, is to take care of business, and then we can have fun. That's right. Um, you know, to go up there focused, to come out 4-0. and and It's going to be a tall task, but it's one game at a time. The Blackbirds are up first on Saturday. It's the Terriers on uh, Monday evening. You can catch those games on NEC Front Row. And uh, Coach, that Junior's Cheesecake always tastes a lot better after <laughs> victory, so hopefully that can be uh, true for you guys this weekend. You're absolutely right, Dan. Thanks a lot. Hey, Red Flash fans, Matt Papelka. And we have a sophomore forwards, Haley Thomas yeah. here. And Haley, you know, last year we saw you a little injured with your foot last year. How are things progressing with that and how are you feeling this year? Uh, I'm feeling great. I mean, I came back over the summer, I got surgery, and now I feel 
better than ever. All right, fantastic. Let's go for a walk, <laughs> All Haley. Right. You know, just uh, looking over the course this year, what were your expectations coming into this year? Uh, my expectations were just trying to help any way I could. Obviously, I got switched to a forward, and that was totally okay by me as long as I can help the team. <laughs> and, you know, you're playing a little bit local to where you're from. What is that like playing so close to your home? Uh, it's awesome. I mean, a lot of people come out. They know who I am, where I went to high school, so they can. Uh, I can always have a conversation with anyone in the crowd, really. <laughs> All right, so you actually played against your teammates, uh, Carson Swagger, back in high school. Do you remember that game at all? Oh, I do remember that game. It was right on this court. Um, we played a couple different times, mostly for the district championship. But, I mean, it was always competitive, but now we're best friends, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> Now a little bit of a jersey change. Last year you were 51, now you're 15. Is it the one in five? What does that signify for you? Uh, not much. I just had it all through high school, and last year my win had 15, so I took 51, just the opposite, and now I'm at 15. Now one final question here, Haley. Okay. What is your final goal before you leave here at St. Francis? My final goal is to win a couple more NEC championships. Haley Thomas, everybody. There's no basketball here this week in Inside the Gall Arena, but that doesn't mean there's no red flash action. The men's volleyball team gets their 2019 season started with the annual Red Flash Invitational. We'll break it down next when the St. Francis Fast Break continues. If you're not watching NEC Front Row, here's what you're missing. McGee! Oh, what a goal! Alyssa McGee wins it in overtime. Benoit wants to throw, has a man. Cam Lewis, jump ball, does he come down? Of course he does! If it's a jump ball, put your money on number two. Can't deflect it away, she keeps possession. Goodbye to the middle, shot, it's in! Ranger is blocks. Oh, Shamlin is having herself a game. The pitch, straight to drive, deep to left. It's gone! Strike. What a save by Morgret! Kovac off the backside, three on the way, it's good! Little to the other side, Littleton strikes! Looking for somebody, King now picks it up, shoots the three, gets it up and goes! Three Jamal shot. King! Cash is in! Men's volleyball season is officially underway, and that means the 21st season for Mike Rumbaugh, head coach of the Red Flash and a Loretto institution. He's excited about the talent he has coming into DeGaulle Arena this year. I do think that we're gonna be a conference threat this year and uh, we're really excited about that. It's been a pretty crazy four years here and we've had some real highs and some real lows and this year we have a really good opportunity to just keep it level and keep progressing as the season continues and we have a lot of talent. For years we've been going out to the West Coast and playing some of the big name schools. The, uh, we still go out to Long Beach and we got number one in the nation last year's national champion the, uh, at their place again, going to the Pyramid. But getting Hawaii on neutral ground, first time ever playing Hawaii, we're going down to Queens and Charlotte, North Carolina and playing Hawaii and that's going to be a pretty fun match and maybe someday I'll make my way over to Hawaii and get to play there, maybe someday they'll come here. But the uh, playing the big name schools, BYU, we need to play the best to be better. The, uh, and it's actually nice that we actually have a name for ourselves and the big schools want to play us. I think we can go out there and compete with them. They, obviously they're good teams, historically good, but I think we have the talent this year to compete and potentially get some wins off of some quality teams. And the big, the big name means nothing. You know, like we're going up against Penn State. It's just Penn State, it's just a name. You know, we have just as much talent as they do. As long as we can outwork them, outplay them, give more heart, more effort. I mean, Penn State, Long Beach State, it's just a name. It all, all comes down to what's on the court, who's going to be the better team. I think Mark Pavlik is the only coach in the IVA that's been around longer than me. They, uh, so I'm one of the old guys in the league. They, uh, but 20 years at St. Francis have been awesome. Uh, I love it here. Never looked to leave here. They, uh, I love the small school atmosphere. I love the support you get from the, from the community and the athletic department. They, uh, we always have a great group of guys here. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, the goal this year is to, to win an EVA championship, and uh, I mean, I have personal goals besides that, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, you know, as long, it doesn't matter how you contribute, you know, what the stat sheet says, at the end of the day, if your team gets a win, then that's all that matters, and we're going to do everything in our power to get a conference championship. You can catch the men's volleyball team in action on Saturday as part of the Red Flash Invitational, and next weekend when perennial powers BYU and Penn State come to town. 
For scheduling information, visit sfuathletics.com. By Jamal, and it's good. I'll tell you what, he's a gamer. And we're back with the uh, Jamal's Kingdom picking our next top five top NBA players out right now. Right Before now. we start this, I just want to say this will be my favorite topic that we have all day today. Glad to join you, Mr. Ramir. What's my whole name? Rob, <laughs> Rob Mayor Dixon Conover. Right. Nice for you to have you here. Coming in at number five, I have Giannis Antetokounmpo. <laughs> He's having a great year. Then I have number four, Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. Coming in at three, Stephen Curry. I'm going to stop you right there. No. Stephen, Curry, Stephen Curry's at three. I'm going to just stop you right here. Right, I look, I it's finish. two. Hey, listen, I know. Okay, but it's two, pe <laughs> it's two people left. Right. It's two people left. Mm -hmm. And I didn't hear Harden. And wait, wait, wait. Despite. I know he's having a, you know what I'm saying, he's he doing good, but when it comes time for the playoffs, he, ah, he's shaky. He's shaky. He's very shaky. I'm sorry for interrupting. Coming in at number two, I have uh, Kevin Durant and number one, LeBron James. Are you done? I have a lot to say about that list. <laughs> a lot to say about this. You said Harden doesn't show up in the playoffs. Yes. But what does Greek the Freak do? Did he show up in the playoffs? But he's just a, he's well, a freak. <laughs> now, here's for the Jamal's top five. Starting at number five, we're going to go with Kawhi Leonard. He went to Toronto. He's having a great year over there. They're number two in the East, right behind. Right. What more do you want from him? Starting at number four is James Harden. He's having okay. a terrific year, 33 points per game, right. taking everybody out, has a lot of threes, have a lot of anything. I don't Bad see why. Bad goal percentage, but huh? okay. Is he 12 winning? for 35. He's, he's winning. Right, he's yeah. winning. He's taking his okay. team. They went to the Western Conference Finals. Who they lose to? The super team. Team. That's fine. Starting at number three, and I know a lot of you out here don't might say not Kevin agree. Durant. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is number three. <laughs> Almost hit Many him. reasons why. He's great score, great player, unstoppable. But I think what Curry brings to the team more, who is my number two, okay. what Curry brings to the team more is more valuable. My You're number, number one is the one and only, the King, LeBron James. All right, okay, he's, like he's, the greatest of, he's the greatest of all time, or one of the greatest of all we time. We never see eye to eye when we talk about top I'm just five. saying, you didn't put like Harden in your top five. five. I didn't, you didn't put Harden in your top five. I don't five. really like him. I don't think he can come back. <laughs> I don't think he can come back. I honestly <laughs> think we didn't have a good talk here. We did I it. thought we would come in here, we, we was going to be respectful. I didn't want to say, I really don't want to. I appreciate you. being up here. I'm not coming back. Okay, that's it. That's all the time we have for this week. And remember, fans, you can catch the Red Flash all season long on NECfrontroad.com. On Saturday, the women are at 2 and the men are at 4. And on Monday night, the women wrap up the road weekend with a tip at 7 p.m. We'll see you next week on the St. Francis Fast Break. <laughs>